Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Not The Workshop. I'm here today in my garage rather than at the shop because as you guys probably know, since most of you don't live under a rock, that there's some stuff going on in the world right now. Uh, so not everyone's at the shop. I'm here, gonna be working from home today. And in contingency for this happening, a while ago I went to the hardware store and I spent $100 on tools so I could make a knife with nothing but some really, really basic tools. Most of which, probably most of you guys already have at your house anyway. So it'll just be a fun, easy way to get into knife making with a very low cost of entry. Okay, so let's get right into it going over exactly what I bought. The main tool that I bought is this big 12 inch Nicholson file. I also got a quarter inch chainsaw file, a hacksaw, a file card, which is a little wire brush used for cleaning the chips out of files, two small Bessie C clamps, a dual grit sharpening stone, some honing oil, a propane torch, some jute twine, and some super glue. So with that, we're gonna jump right into the design. I'm gonna be using a 1.5 inch by 6 inch by 8 inch piece of 1080 high carbon steel. You can pick these up for about five bucks at the Alex Steel Co. We're gonna start off with our design for this thing. We wanna make sure this is gonna be a proportional knife. We want it to look good, we want it to work good. Okay, we got our knife drawn out on here. We've got the handle with a taper that goes from thin to thick, and that just helps lock your hand in there. We've got a nice drop point shape to the blade. We kept it kind of thin because hand filing bevels takes a while, and so the thinner, the easier. We're gonna hack in the rough profile before I move on to shaping it with files. Now the way that we wanna do this is by making as few cuts as possible. So we'll start off by cutting straight down to where this ricasso is here, and then we'll take off another slice along where the handle goes, another to about right there, close to where the blade is, and then another along the curve of the blade, and the last one right there. Now the process for cutting out the blade goes a lot faster if you have something like this. A vise of any sort is a hugely handy tool when making knives, but I'm not gonna use it because I didn't buy it in that hundred dollar budget. So for us, we're just going to clamp down onto whatever your work surface is. For me, it's this Craftsman workbench that was already here when I got here. Okay, I'm gonna switch around the direction that this blade is cutting so I can cut straight up and down. I wanna be able to cut on the pull down stroke, so I'm just gonna switch this around real quick. Started off our cut with the file. Wow, this blade is already completely dull. All right, we're gonna switch band, <laughs> we're gonna switch hacksaw blades and get back to it. I'll tell you what, I miss bench vices. We got the knife <laughs> hacked to shape. It's now time to tune in that profile with a hand file. Not sure exactly how I'm gonna clamp this. I think I'm gonna clamp one of the C-clamps to this and then that other C-clamp that's clamping onto this onto the table. I'm just gonna see how it works out. All right, so here's where we're at. We got the inside of the handle shaped, the butt shaped, the back shaped, and the edge. The only thing we have left is this part right here. And that's just the very edge of the clip. And I'll go in a little bit more into detail about how exactly I've been filing on this because there's a specific way that you gotta do it to not make this horrible, horrible screeching noise. It's not quite what you might expect. So I made this little bench pin out of the handle of the file card, which means that I can hold on to it while I'm filing, which is a huge improvement over trying to clamp it with these two things. Now with the hand file, it's a lot easier to cut on the angle Upwards. If you try to cut downwards, you just get this horrible vibration that doesn't work very well. But if you cut on the upward stroke, you're actually able to cut. And so that's what we try to do on everything. Uh, it's always easier to cut upwards and you're pulling the material off the edge as opposed to pushing it away.
All right, I'm liking that profile a lot better. I'm gonna move on to doing the bevels now. I'm gonna start off by carving a pretty steep angle onto both sides, establish a rough center line, and then kind of pull those bevels back, and I'll play around with the chainsaw file to carve in the plunge lines along the way. Okay, the knife is looking absolutely fantastic right now. I finished up those bevels with the file. I then did my best at hand sanding with that big stone that I bought. And I started off on the coarse side and I flipped it over and did the fine side. I think at most it's probably a 220 grit finish, but it's a little bit better than a file finish, which is what we had. I then moved on and used the corner of that big file to rough in a little bit of jimping on the back and it just gives you your thumb a little bit something to rest on gives it a little bit of grip which is really nice and I carved in a couple spots for that twine to sit as well so hopefully it won't slip off when you're using it. We're now ready for the heat treat. This edge is nice and thin which is good because that torch isn't very powerful but it also means that I'm not gonna have a whole lot to do after heat treat. It's gonna be a little bit harder to work down anything after heat treat. So we're just gonna heat up this blade to about 1500 degrees. We'll check it with a magnet, make sure it's above that critical temperature. It loses its magnetism about 1475. And that's an easy way to find out if you're ready to quench. So we'll heat it up. Probably just the edge will be hot the first I don't know, three eighths of an inch or so. That's really all we need for this knife. And then we'll quench it into some vegetable oil and we'll temper it at 400 degrees for two two hour cycles. All right, so here we go. Got my magnet right here to check against. I'm holding it with this uh, clamp just so it doesn't burn my hand. Starting to see those temper colors in the blade. All right guys, we're just not getting the heat out of this torch that we need. This little torch didn't quite get up to temp. It would get just one part of the blade up to temp. Fortunately, I have a backup. It is a much larger torch. This is the Burnzomatic TS8000. It's about $20 more expensive than this one. That being said, I was trying to do this on a budget as tight as possible. This is something we use in the shop all the time. Absolutely worth it. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one instead. You'll see the difference. Definitely worth the extra $20. So this is how to make a knife with $120, not $100, I apologize. That should have been plenty fast for it. Nice and hot. Oh, we got nice scale pop happening there, I bet. Yep, we've even gotten the hardening line. The line between the hardened steel and the unhardened steel, this doesn't need to be hard. It's just gonna get wrapped in twine. That's the handle. It doesn't matter if it's hard or not. It's gonna hold up structurally pretty well either way. It's actually probably a little bit better if it's not hard. It's not gonna chip or break, and there's no stress points on here then. So our whole edge is hardened. It's now time to take this, throw this into just a regular home oven. I'm gonna throw mine in at 400 degrees for two two hour long cycles. Okie doke, it's the next morning now. I got this tempered last night and again this morning. It's looking absolutely fantastic. It's now time to move on to doing the final finish on the blade and around the tang. Now what this is gonna look like for the blade is basically taking some long passes with that stone on the fine side, trying to get all those scratches looking nice and even, getting a nice satin finish on there. And then probably a pretty similar process around the edge of the tang as well.
Okay guys, we got the blade finished out now. It's at a, sa a sand handed, it's at a hand sanded finish of probably somewhere around 220 grit. It's not time to move on to cord wrapping the handle. I have no idea how this is gonna work out. I've never done a handle like this before. I did carve some notches for that twine to sit in and I've got some super glue to help hold it in place while I get it started. We're just gonna jump in and see how it goes. So, got my twine, uh, find the halfway point and I'm just gonna, just gonna go for it. Got it locked in there. I think I'm gonna try that like halfway wrap and twist thing. So as you guys can see what I'm doing here is I'm taking each cord, wrapping it around, twisting it, pulling tension, pushing down, and flipping around to do it again on the other side. And I've just done that all the way up the handle. My hand is cramping pretty bad at this point, but we're almost done. I don't know how in the world I'm going to finish this thing off, but I'm gonna have to do it somehow. Do three wraps and then under and in, pull tight. I think it works pretty good. There we go. That's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna cut that and take some of this super glue, some of the super glue, dot it into that end. Hey, that looks pretty good. Cool, cool, cool. Now, time to do the final sharpening and then we'll be finished with it. All right, I'm just gonna use the, uh, the fine side for this. Get a little honing oil on there. The edge is already fairly thin, which is why I'm not gonna use that coarse side. Alrighty-o, I figured that just about ought to do it. Bam, what a cool little knife. I figure that'll just about do it. We got ourselves one sharp little knife. It's awesome. I wish that stone was a little bit finer. Would have gotten a little bit nicer of an edge on it. You guys can always go out and find a finer stone if you want to, to get a nicer edge on yours. But I'd say overall, this came out absolutely wonderfully. It's a totally usable knife. Uh, it's got that, that cord wrapped handle actually came out really comfortably. I'm honestly a little bit surprised. Overall, really fun project. And cool to see that really with $120 of hand tools from the hardware store, and a bench in your garage, which most people have, you can make a knife, and it's a lot of fun. And if you want to invest a little bit more, you can get other tools that make it a lot easier as well. Uh, a bench vise is a great investment. So thanks for following along on this video today, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.